book is The Sour Grape. I'm a grape, a sour grape. Grr. If somebody upsets me, I'll remember it. If somebody wrongs me, I won't forget it. If somebody insults me, I'll never ignore it. Nope. See that banana over there? That banana slipped and bumped into me, so I'm holding a grudge. See that orange? That orange didn't call me back for a week. Grudge. See that lime? That lime borrowed my scarf and never returned it. Grudge. I suppose I've got pretty thin skin for a grape. Nobody steps on this grape. Grrr. Granted, it wasn't always this way. I grew up in a close knit bunch. There were about three thousand of us in our little community. We were so sweet to each other. You look nice today. So do you. No, you do. We all lived on a vine. Sure, it was a bit claustrophobic, especially when we were trying to get ready in the morning. Are you done in there? Come on! But my family was ripe with humor, goodwill, and warmth. We did our best with what we had. Are you gonna finish that? My grandparents visited on the weekends. We'd stroll in the sun, and they'd teach us what they knew. They said it takes a bunch to raise a seed. They said that good grapes roll their own way in life. They told us to be kind, forgiving, considerate, and grateful. Or grateful, my grandpa said with a wink. Above all, no matter what life throws at you, and there will be a lot, try to stay sweet, my grandma said. Indeed, he said in response. And for a while, I was the sweetest of the sweet. I said please. I said thank you. I brushed aside life's little annoyances. I knew how good I had it. Oops! Ha <laughs> ha! No problem at all. But then one day something changed in me. It was my birthday. I had rigorously and vigorously planned a big party for weeks. I'd sent out invitations with the date, with the date prominently displayed. Get this! I had a Ferris wheel, a magician, and hay rides. I had snacks upon snacks upon snacks. The highlight of the party, though, was a fireworks display, which would happen at sundown. I stood out front and waited for folks to arrive. I had a gigantic smile on my face. I waited. Everybody was a little late, it seemed. No big deal, no big whoop. So I waited. A tumbleweed rolled by. A coyote howled in the distance. The sun sank behind the hills. Sigh, and I waited. Nobody showed up, and I mean nobody. By the time the fireworks show started, with me as the sole spectator, I was scowling. I considered everybody I'd invited, and only one thought came to my mind: grudge, 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 grudge. After that, my personality became something else entirely. I went from a sweet grape. To a bitter grape, to a snappy grape. Who moved my chair? Finally, I became a sour grape. Grr. I started holding minor grudges that eventually became major grudges. Why don't you watch where you're going? I scowled so much that my face got all squishy. You know what? Don't even bother calling me back. I took my grumpiness out on others. 
Are you ever going to return my scarf? That's just how it's been. Day after day, week after week, month after month, grudge after grudge. But something happened recently that changed my thinking. I was getting ready to meet up with my friend Letty, the only fellow I know who's as sour as I am. Lenny and I usually Lenny and I usually go to the park where we sit on the bench and rant about stuff. But just when I was heading out the door, I bumped my knee. Oof. After I bandaged myself up, I discovered I had a flat tire. Rug. Then I missed the bus and the next bus was late. Wah. Finally, I got off on the wrong stop. Sheesh. By the time I arrived at the park, it was getting dark. Lenny was fuming and furious, with a frown in a fur- furrowed forehead. His face looked all squishy. We agreed to meet at exactly four o'clock. You're three hours late. I tried to explain why I was so tardy, but Lenny wouldn't listen. He'd already made up his mind. He formed a huge grudge, and he wouldn't budge. I couldn't believe it. How unfair! I thought. How ridiculous! I thought. How um, how similar to the way I would react. Hmm. Lenny was pretty worked up. He was pacing back and forth, emitting occasional grumbles. His tone was tart, so I gave him a little space. Besides, it was nice out. I noticed the sky changing colors, the melodic chirping of birds, the evening breeze, the buzz of the park's insects coming alive at night. Suddenly, I felt grateful, and peaceful, and calm. Had I been missing all the simple beauty because I was too busy complaining? Meanwhile, old Lemmy stormed off, muttering something about disrespect and lack of consideration. I'm pretty sure I heard him out of grrr too. I walked home. I pulled a dusty box out from under my bed. There were old family photos inside. Memories. I spotted myself in one of the pictures. I was so sweet. I knew that little grape from the photo was still a big part of me, deep down. It would just take some work to get back there again. And that was the exact moment I found the invitation I sent out for my infamous birthday party, the one where nobody showed up. It said May thirty first, but wait, wait a minute here. My birthday was on May twenty one. Alas, I told everyone to come on the wrong day. Gulp, it was all my fault. I realize nobody's perfect, not even me. After that day, I started noticing other things too. Like how remaining sour all the time was so draining. I'd wasted so much energy holding grudges that I could have easily cleared the air if I felt hurt. And yes, I still get upset from time to time, but that's okay, because now I talk and I listen and I work things out instead of just walking away. My sourness is fading. I'm letting go of all my grudges, and hey, it's working. Slip-ups happen. I'm just glad you're okay. Ah, thanks. That scarf looks sublime on you. Why don't you keep it? Really, you're the best. Aren't you glad we got to catch up? I'm so grateful that we did. Sure. Sometimes. I still let out a little grr when I'm frustrated, like this, grr. But then I move on. My face is less squishy too. Oh, and don't worry, things are okay with Lenny again. Gosh, I'm sorry I'm late. 
You must be furious. No big deal, my friend. You know what? If you look at things in the right sort of way, and if you remember to be kind, considerate, forgiving, and grateful, life can really, life really can be pretty sweet. Yes, indeed. The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is when he was in the boat in the park. Thank you for reading with me.